Hello and welcome to the SolidWorks 2019 Designer to Analyst Live event, where today we're going to show you how SolidWorks can be used to help improve your overall product designs. I'm Jeremy Rignaris, I'm the host, and joining me here today, I have a couple of folks from SolidWorks. I have Kurt with the product introduction team and Hari in product definition. Welcome, both of you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks, Jeremy. Now, Hari, I always like to, on these live events, introduce people and let the folks at home know a little bit about what they do at SolidWorks. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role in product definition? Sure, Jeremy. Uh, in product definition, uh, I write functional requirements or specifications and what goes into some of the features in SolidWorks. And I primarily work on uh, simulation features. And one of the things we have to do is look at uh, the customer's workflow and see where his pain points are and add features so we remove those pain points. And we have to also improve the performance and also have time savings for the customer while doing that. So that sounds like things any customer would definitely benefit from. What's an example of a workflow we've improved in SolidWorks 2019? Sure. Uh, recently, uh, we were looking at copy study, and a lot of uh, users create their features on static study, and then they want to reuse that work in nonlinear study and not set it up again. So uh, show us a pri Kurt, can you show us an example of how somebody might do this to save themselves some time? Yeah, Jeremy. So... I've got an example here where I've got a study set up, uh, and I'm looking at the, the deflection of these pin hooks, and I realize a nonlinear study is more appropriate. So I can just use the copy study functionality we introduced a few releases ago, and copy all of the study elements from the linear static study over to the nonlinear study, and they all come across. That saves me a ton of time on the setup. Make, it ensures that I don't have any errors or did things a little differently from one to the other. And also, new in 2019, I can now add up to uh, 10 faces to specify my pin joint there in the back. So that cuts down a, a huge amount of time that I used to take to, uh, to set up and define that pin connection in the back. It also looks like it provides a lot of flexibility and lets our customers kind of iterate between a static simulation and going to nonlinear is just a much easier process. Absolutely. Now, Hari, you also mentioned performance inside right. of our simulation products. What's an example of something that we've done to increase the performance of the simulation tools? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so last year I was working with a customer, and he sent me a file um, which had like 32 load cases for a gantry system. Wow. And um, he said, like, I noticed that you're running these 32 studies uh, in load case manager sequentially. Is that something you can do? So we looked at all the common things the solver did uh, for those 32 studies, and we just did that once. So what used to maybe take a minute for each of those load cases, take 32 minutes overall, we now can take only three or four minutes because we only solve the deltas uh, beyond just solving that big piece once. And that's a huge time savings for the customer. Those sound like drastic time savings. Sure. Now, Kurt, for people who haven't used Load Case Manager, can you run us through an example of how they might use this and benefit from this new performance enhancement? I sure can, Jeremy. So Load Case Manager has been in SolidWorks simulation for, for quite some time, um, and it's, it's a great tool because I can just lay my problem out in a grid form like this and have my different load cases set up. But when I hit Run, <coughs> instead of solving them linearly, and taking all that time, it just looks at the difference. In this case on our bike, I just have different load directions that I'm hitting the handlebar to, to come in and look at the results. So it, it saves a ton of time on solving this particular problem. It's like we as users of SolidWorks, we always say work smarter, not harder. Now we're actually getting to the point where we're having the software <laughs> work smarter and not harder. Um, Hari, now right. I look at these as great performance enhancements, but okay. like there's other areas. So for example, I may work in an assembly. Where's a way I could save a bunch of time working in uh, assemblies with simulation? Sure. Uh, so when you're talking about assemblies, you're thinking, oh, I have to mesh the whole assembly and I have to model the, all the parts and analyze if I'm just interested in one of the brackets. So with the new distributed uh, option in remote load, I can take the effects of the tire and the frame attaching to the bracket and put it onto the bracket without having to mesh the tire or the frame, saving me a ton of time uh, and then still get realistic loads. And the coolest thing about this is um, we uh, got some technology from our sister brand 
And I'm looking forward to see how we can take this technology. This is a fundamental technology which we used here uh, for the distributed uh, option and remote load uh, in other areas in the future as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to see lots more use cases for <laughs> leveraging other technology within the organization. Absolutely. Speaking of really cool technology, Kurt, uh, earlier this year you had the opportunity to talk about some really cool technology we're using inside a SOLIDWORKS simulation called Topology. Have we done anything to like take that further this year? Absolutely, Jeremy. So we introduced Topology study <coughs> in SOLIDWORKS 2018, in simulation 2018, and it was primarily focused on the best stiffness to weight ratio of my part. Uh, so give me the lightest, stiffest part you can. But there are a lot of other constraints or conditions that designers face. And one of the biggest ones that's a, a little bit hard to, to think about on design is frequency. But most things sit next to a motor or there's some frequency consideration. So now in topology study, I can simply add a frequency constraint directly into my, into my setup and have it solve for that constraint as well. And it, it's a really cool setup because I can, I can look at the first mode case, I can look at multiple load cases, uh, I can keep below or above a certain range. It, it's a very powerful setting in there, as well as stress constraints and factor safety constraints. I can solve for all of these simultaneously and get my geometry back out of a topology study. This looks great, and I can't wait to see these results. But before we get there, Hari, I want to take a few minutes and thank you for joining us here on the stage today. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Now, Kurt, we've seen how topology optimization can create these really cool-looking parts. They're very organic in shape, and, and I always kind of wonder, where do I go next with this? And to talk about this, we've brought Stephen Endersby from the product management team. Stephen, welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, Stephen... Kurt was just showing me how we've expanded the capabilities of topology studies to include things like frequency and factor of safety. I still, we, we look at the results and I go, how do we make this part? Can you elaborate? Yes, certainly, Jeremy. I think a lot of people, when they see the results from a topology study, they see a very organic shape. So they automatically think that they have to have some sort of additive manufacturing process to, to create it. But for a lot of situations, it's equally valid to take that result inside of SOLIDWORKS and start creating uh, pockets and cutouts that would be manufactured by a traditional subtractive process. Yes, you can print directly from the topology study, but a lot of times you, you can use a traditional manufacturing method because all you want is the lightest part you can possibly manufacture. These parts look great. They look like something that I could make, but yet they're totally taking the guidance that we've gotten from SOLIDWORKS simulation and really help steer me in the right direction to get Correct, that part. Correct, that's right. Now, we, we, it's interesting, we're talking about manufactured components, and I always find it very compelling that we have a simulation tool that's actually focused on a manufacturing process, SOLIDWORKS Plastics. Tell us a little bit about that. So when you think about SOLIDWORKS Plastics, you have your ideal plastic shape inside a cat. And the question is, when it comes out of the mold tool, is it going to really be that shape? SOLIDWORKS Plastics answers that question. Will it fill? What's the mold uh, performance? So it's a great way to know what's going to come out of the plastic injection machine before you uh, commit to manufacturing. Now, Kurt, we were speaking with Hari a few moments ago, and he was talking about improving workflows and performance. What are we doing with workflows in SOLIDWORKS Plastics to, to make those processes easier? Sure, Jeremy. Uh, probably the biggest enhancement inside of SOLIDWORKS Plastics is around the workflow. Um, so new in 2019, I can apply conditions like the injection load, uh, the injection location, directly onto the CAD model instead of applying it onto the mesh. So I'm doing that operation first, um, and it actually gets saved in the model. Now I can do that uh, not only for like a, a mesh, uh, or I'm sorry, a, an injection location, but also for say something like mesh controls and so on. So I set all of this up and I'm doing it onto the CAD model itself instead of onto the mesh, meaning I only have to do it once because it, in all design, the, the, it's an iterative process. Things change, I have to make decisions, maybe functionally this needs to be a little bit shorter. Maybe I figured out from the first uh, plastics run that I need to convert you know, those other areas from being bosses or standouts to, to cuts to, to make the mold 
fill better, make the end plastic part look better. So getting my results much faster and much easier for the designer and communicating them off to the, the, the plastic injection mold manufacturer later. Yeah, and that example you just mentioned, uh, making a change to the model, you no longer have to go back in there and remesh it and reapply it. It's just like all our other simulation products. You hit mesh and run, mesh and run, right? Absolutely. It's all about getting information early, making an informed decision, and making your part better each time. It's interesting you talk about making informed decisions. We're always trying with our simulation products to make results the easiest way to understand. Where are some other areas we're doing that? So with uh, flow simulation, we've done a lot of work on the uh, results and understanding of the results. A lot of our users are mechanical engineers. So if you give a mechanical engineer a problem, say it's a piece of metal and it bends, they know how it works. But you say it's an airflow, they're going to go, I don't really know how that works. So we have to work really hard to help the expert inform the novice and in indeed inform their boss as to how this thing can actually perform in the real world. Now, Kurt, in this case, I feel like the novice and <laughs> you're the expert. Why don't you go through and show me what he's talking about? Certainly, Jeremy. So a, a very traditional you know, design. I have a, a welded box, right? And, and inside of it, it's full of electronics. Standard use case. In flow simulation, um, I'm understanding how the heat is transferring through the box and around the box. And in this case, it sits at you know 100 meters deep, so how it ultimately transfers out into the water. So I can look at that visually and make good decisions, but new for 2019, I have this flow chart. And I can look at the heat all the way from its source into each con individual component. I can see how those are participating in convection, in conduction, um, and how the, the heat is flowing through there graphically all the way to the, the water in this case, to, you know, to where the heat is being disposed. Now this is an example where, yeah, I can see the air flow on the top, but I can't see the heat in the individual components. But that chart at the bottom, even I can see which components have high heat and which ones are low heat and, 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 and how that's impacting that study. That's really easy for anybody to understand there. Now, um, Stephen, one of the things we've discussed kind of throughout this talk was the iterative design process. How, what are ways we can use simulation to help with that iterative design process? I think it's very important very early on to, to determine what measurement you want to improve. So what, what is the KPI that your product makes it the best it can be? So once you have that, once you can measure it, then you can use a system to optimize upon that. And we can use our parametric studies, whether it be low case, or topology or parametrics to really hone in on that KPI and make your product better. So how, so how do I go about doing that with, say, something like SolidWorks flow simulation? Well, Jeremy, in 2019, I can now uh, apply and give my own KPI, my own information, and set up my own goals uh, using conditional statements, things like that. I can also set up a parametric study using the same type of input. So I can directly drive exactly what I'm either looking for in a result or how I want to drive my problem and let the computer go do all of the work and give me the result. So the, for the people who aren't aware at home, when you're talking about it, driving it parametrically, we mean actually like driving the dimensional data in the SOLIDWORKS model Absolutely. based on results. Absolutely. You, you choose which dimensions you want to change and how big or small you want to drive it and tell me what's the best fit. What did we say earlier? Work smarter, not harder? I love that. I love that. <laughs> All right. So we're going to be wrapping up here in a little bit, but I wanted to spend a few minutes. Uh, I always like to ask my guests, what is, you know, what do you really get or like inside of SolidWorks? And Stephen, you've seen a lot of great new stuff in SolidWorks 2019. What's your favorite thing in, in any of the simulation products? For me, it's got to be plastics. I mean, I know I always make changes. So once I do the setup once, I want it to continue for the rest of the life of that product. So do it once keep using it again and again and again. Yeah. And Kurt, I obviously have to ask you the same question. I think <laughs> I know what it is, but why don't you tell us? Of course it's that flow chart. Flow simulation is such a powerful tool and making the results that easy to understand and interpret is, is key to driving your design. It, it allows you to really get right to the re understanding those results and how it impacts the performance of your designs. Yes. Yeah. Well, great. Both of you, thank you so much for joining us here today. Um, that's going to do it for our designer to, uh, designer to analyst piece uh, that we're covering today. To learn more about our simulation products, I encourage you to go visit our website at solidworks.com simulation. 
Earlier this afternoon, we also looked at a lot of our data management tools in a segment called um, digital. Uh, uh, <coughs> distributed data management. Please go and check out our social channels on YouTube and Facebook where you can watch those archived videos as well. If you like these live videos, please comment below maybe a topic you'd like to see in the future. And, coming, and speaking of in the future, coming up uh, in a couple months in February, uh, the 10th through the 13th in Dallas, Texas, we'll be coming to you live again from SolidWorks World. Until then, I can't wait to see you next time.